because he's been real good. Yes. Oh, yeah. Real good, real good. I thank the Lord for his favor and I thank God for his strength. Thank the Lord above all that he saved me, saw fit to look down through eternity and change my life. I'm glad of it because I recognize not now that apart from the Lord in my life, I wouldn't be as I am today. It wouldn't have happened, it wouldn't have taken place had not the Lord saw fit to shine the light of the glorious gospel into a darkened soul and allow me to change in respect to his word. What yes, a yes, mighty God yes, yes. we serve. Yes. Giving honor to God and his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Thanking the Lord for all that thought it not robbery to come to the house of God and give God praise and thanksgiving today. Every day is a good day. Every day is a good day, regardless of what day it is. Every day is a good day to give him praise and thanksgiving yes. because he is worthy yes. to be praised. Amen. As we were meditating today, or should I say yesterday on the word of God and throughout the week. Uh, we were so encouraged. I thank the Lord because I'm always uh, challenged in a good way when I begin to think about the Psalms and think about how God spoke to David. David was used mightily by God. Um, David had a way of articulating the heart of God. The heart of God first from man and the heart of God then from man to God. David had a way of articulating it and bringing it to the point to make it um, understandable to us who believe. And many, many people before us and those that will come after us continue to read the Psalms because it meditates to our, it should I say, it ministers to our spirit. It, it enlightens us, it encourages us, it lifts us. It, it really exposes and gives us an idea of what the heart of God is like. Amen. So I thank God how he used David, because David Amen. really Amen. brought into understanding what the prophet said in um, Isaiah 55 and 6. He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. David understood what it was to seek God as well as it was to call on him. It is, it is no secret in the word of God that David had a special relationship yes. with God, a very special relationship with God. Yes. And God uh, identified that because even in the call of David and the fall of Saul and the, in the uh, change in administration, God spoke to the prophet Samuel and said, you know what? He said, don't you grieve over Saul. He said, I found me a man after mine own heart. Go to the house of Jesse. Go to his house. He said, there's someone there that will be the one that I call down to be anointed. Yes. And I'm glad because God said that David was a man after mine own heart. And even though David was a boy at the time he was anointed, God saw what he would be. And that's the way God does with you and I. God anoints us and calls us and sees us what sees what we will be. Yes. And, and deposits that in us and brings it to pass when it's time and when it's the appointed time for his purpose. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm glad about that. I'm glad, I'm glad God doesn't wait around till we get right. Yes. Because if that be the case, none of us would be here today. Yes. God had to call us while we were wrong yes. so that he could deposit in us what we need. Yes. Glory to God. That's right. You didn't turn your head and start deciding to come to church or start believing God or taking God at his word because it was something about you. It was something he deposited in you. And I'm glad God did it. And in the course of David, God used him mightily and anointed him and refreshed him. David was not only a, a, a minstrel and he was able to sing songs, but he was a minister of the things of God and a servant of the things of God. And God used him mightily. Amen, amen. From yes, Psalm 1 yes, to yes, Psalm 150, God used him mightily, yes. mightily. Look at our text here. It's Psalm 61. Psalm 61. We thank God for his word. Amen. Psalm 61. His word is so refreshing. Psalm 61 begins, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. 
For thou, O God, has heard my vows. Thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto the name, unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vow. May the Lord add a blessing to the yes, reading yes, yes. and the hearing of his word. Amen. Thank God for his word. I thank Amen. God for the word, because the word is life to us. We cannot exist apart from the word of God. If I might use for just a word this morning would be rock climbing. Somebody might say that doesn't make sense, but we hope that it makes sense when we're done. Uh, rock climbing, when you consider the names uh, in the scripture, the names given to God throughout scripture, none is so uh, prevalent as well as embraced as rock. You read over and over. Actually, it's the word rock in reference to God being a rock is probably in scripture more than 25 times. The word rock is probably in there 150 times. But the word rock in reference to the Lord being my rock and my strength and my fortress is probably in scripture over 25 times. God is referenced as rock because he is stability. He is strength. He's all that we need for whatever we need. And as a believer, he's my strength. He's my rock. He's my fortress. How many times? Have we leaned on the Lord? And how many times have we leaned on the Lord in respect of his word? Yes. In other words, you read God's word, the next thing you had the force to be strengthened in, in the, in the situation or the circumstance you were going through, you read that God would never leave you nor forsake you, and then you found that to be a strength for you to be encouraged in the thing you were going through. So his word is a rock. What he says is stability. What, is, what he says through his word enables us to be uh, in times of uh, distress and in times of indecision. It helps us to be unmovable. It helps us to stand in spite of it all. Have you ever stood in spite of it all? Well, that's what the word of God can do uh, for you, and that's what the word of God is. It's a rock. It's a fortress. It's a strength. Even when you think of the opening lyrics, the rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow. In other words, it's saying, listen, all that we, all the strength we need and all that we stand in need of is in the rock. The rock not only in our relationship to God, but the rock in Christ Jesus because Christ finished the work. Amen. He finished the work. And as well as his present work right now is to intercede for you and I. So the blood that poured from his side, amen, is, is an example of the strength that we draw upon right now because by his blood, we've been made whole. By his blood, we've been separated, amen, for his glory. By his blood, amen, he's enabled us and given us the strength so that we can hold on and hold out. The word of God is a rock, and the word of God is able to give us what we need for whatever we need. Amen. I'm glad about that. Amen. The word of God is a rock. When I look at that and examine his word, I recognize that his word is more than just something I read. His word is stability. His word is strength. His word is substance. His word is, is, is the life of who I am. His word gives me the, the strength and the confidence. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's a rock. It's a fortress. It's a strength. It's courage for me when I don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. He gives me what I need yes. for whatever I need. In the Old Testament, God would often speak over and over, and he often spoke uh, on occasion to Moses, and Moses being used mightily of God. Nobody has to give Moses a resume because Moses was used mightily of God. God snatched him from a mountain and placed him before Pharaoh, and the next thing you know, he's leaving, leading millions of people over a Red Sea. 
and God had a special relationship. And in, in, in the interesting part is when God wanted to show himself to Moses, he showed himself in, 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 on a rock and in a place of stability and in a place of strength. Exodus 33 and 21 says, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And the 22nd verse says, and it shall come to pass when my glory passes by, mm -hmm. that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock yes. and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back part, mm -hmm. but my face shall not, shall not be seen. God said, listen, even though you want to see my face and see my glory, I'm going to let you see my back part. But really understand this, the whole process, the whole scenario will be in, in, in retrospect to a rock. He said, listen, I'm going to hide you. Not only am I, am, am I the rock, he said, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to hide you. You don't know no better because if you saw my glory, he said you couldn't survive. So he said, I had to put my hand over your face so that you could be shielded from my glory. So I had to put you in the rock. Yes, I'm glad God hides yes, us Lord. in a rock. Yeah. Lord, show me yourself. Oh, no. Put your hand over your face and just hide me in the cleft of the rock and just let me see what you desire me to see. My mind. Why? Because God is a strength. We couldn't stand his force. Uh, we couldn't stand his power. Yeah. We couldn't stand his strength yeah. apart from him shielding it and giving us what we need for whatever that's we right. need. Yes. That's right. Thank you. A rock. A rock. There's no question. That's why the world wants to diminish his power and his authority. That's why they want to make light of who God is and make it a joke. Understand this. All God got to do is breathe on us and we'd be no more. All God got to do is think about it, and we wouldn't be here. That's right. God is strength, God is power, God is authority. I'm so glad, so glad that he's seen more than a force and more than a strength. He's a mighty presence that has to be dealt with as well as answered to. Yes. Why? Because God is God all by himself. Amen. Psalm 62, 62 and two, uh, verse 2, 6 and 7 says uh, things concerning God being a rock, making reference to him. He said, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and shall not be greatly moved. Verse 6 says, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. Verse 7 says, in God is my salvation, my glory, the rock of my strength. And my refuge is in God. Yes. Amen. He's a strength. Amen. He's Amen. an authority. He's power. He's Amen. glory. He's presence. He's my rock. Yes, in our text, the first half of the Psalm 61, God, David is petitioning God as well as applauding God for his covenant. He's petitioning as well as applauding God for his covenant. In the second half of Psalm 61, David is praising God for his covenant and thanking him by the words of his mouth and making bow before God. He's thanking him. Look at our text here, Psalm 61, 1 through 4. Look at our text. It says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. Yes. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. As a Christian, we are often overwhelmed. And it's good to know that my rock can raise me to a level that I can not only survive, but I can be rock steady, if you will, and be unmovable. That God is able to give me the strength in the process of my dilemma that causes me to run to him for shelter, run to him for comfort, yes. run to him for whatever I need. Yes. I think that's what's missing in a lot of the profession and the testimony of people is that God has just become a 911 operator. How many times have you called 911 and called the operator back and said, thank you for being there when I called? They don't get a return call to say thank you. But in a crisis, we always have no problem saying, Lord, help me. Come 
quickly, Jesus. If you don't move now, God, if you've ever moved before, move on my behalf right now. But God is more than just a 911 operator. He's a, he's a present help in time of need. He's, he's my strength. He's my help. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, he said, lead me, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. God, he said, listen, cover me, drag me, pull me, whatever you got to do, bring me into a place like he told uh, Moses beside you so that I can be comforted, so I can be shielded, so I can be taken care of. Don't you want God to take care of you? Yes. Don't you want God to handle it? Yes. Don't you want God to fix it? Not only a fixer, but he's a keeper. Yes. Don't you want him to do it? I know I do. I know I do. And I look at the journey we go on as believers, the walk, the talk, what we do. We're on a journey. It's a walk of faith. It's every day. It's each day. It's faith by faith. Uh -huh. We walk in faith believing for what God is doing in our lives. We trust God. We believe God. We take him at his word. We move forward in our divine purpose, believing that God is going to take us to our expected end, and he will. It's a journey. It's a, it's a test. It's a, it's a proving ground. It's a walking ground. It's what God has called and determined for each and every one of us who believe. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, Amen. which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We're a work in progress. Amen. I mean, we're doing what we're doing, but we're doing it in faith, believing, but the process is, is that God is working it out, and right now I'm trusting him and running to him so that I can have the wisdom, the discernment, the confidence to know that as I know what I need to know, God is as concerned about it as I am. Yes. yes thank you. That's right. You ever, you ever have the enemy discourage you and make you think that God is not as concerned about you as you are? <laughs> When you pray, when you fast, when you honor God, when you walk in obedience, there's usually a moment, there's usually a space of time where you stop and think, does this really matter? And it does. Yeah, yeah. It does matter what you do. It does matter how you believe. It does matter that you walk. It does matter that you walk. It does matter that you consume God's word and walk in faith believing. It does matter. It's not just something you do. It's not just something you do. God has a plan in mind. Yes. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3 and 13, he says, Brethren, I caught not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things out which are behind me, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm running towards the rock. I'm running towards God's authority and purpose in my life. I'm running in the will of God so that God can reveal to me, make it known to me, that the process of which I'm going through, he's, he's going to bring me out. He's going to show me. He's going to make me. He's going to shape me. He's going to do just like Jeremiah did down at the potter's house. He's working me right now on the wheel. And so I'm pressing towards the mark. There's a prize. There's an end. Come there's on. a victory. There's a completion. Yes, sir. Why? Because God has determined it before the foundation of the world. Yes, yes. If I'm not just a lump of clay thrown on the wall, God has a purpose and a plan. And my conclusion is in the rock. Yes, sir. My conclusion is in the authority of who God is. Yes, yes. That's my conclusion. I'm coming to a certain end. Paul told me, he said, listen, don't run a race with and not expect to win. Don't run a race and not expect to, to compete in it. He said, listen, run expecting. Run with, with a mindset that God is doing something and bringing me to an end. I plan to finish. I plan to cross the finish line. Amen. I plan to. Why? Because God is working it out. Psalms 37 and uh, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. I plan to finish. I plan to complete the task. I plan to get wherever God is taking me. See, that, that's what you got to understand is that God has a divine plan Come on. for your life. Woo, glory. Uh -huh. You might have been running your business, uh -huh. but God has a greater plan yes. for your life. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Amen. 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 
Amen. He has a plan. He has a plan. Glory, 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 glory. He has a plan. I'd like to use the word rock and take somewhat of an acronym here, uh, using the word rock and, and begin to talk about uh, four things. The reign of God, the outlook of God, the character of God, and the kindness of God over my life. Because that, 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 that spells the word rock, but more so it's talking about God's purpose and plan over your life. His reign, his outlook, his character, and his kindness. He's a rock. Run to it. There's no lack in God. Whatever you stand in need of, run to the rock. Huh? Why? Because you're rock climbing. What do you need, Pastor? I'm rock. You're always on a journey. I thought to bring a staff this morning. I wonder why Moses would lead all the time, but it, it kept him walking concerning himself because he knew God had a purpose and a plan. He had to lean on and what he leaned on was his staff and his staff represented the authority and the will of God so that when he would get weary, he'd lean on the rock. When he'd get weary, he'd lean on his staff and use that to guide him not only over the Red Sea, but through the mountain passes, through the desert. He would use that as the authority to say, listen, I'm on a rock climbing expedition. Why? Because my rock is leading me. God is leading me. I'm rock climbing. Why? Because I don't know which way I'm going. Even as Abraham was going up the mount to sacrifice his son, he didn't know what would happen. All he knew what God told him. But he expected this, that if God did what he said, then God had the authority, because he's God, to raise up him who had died. Right. He knew it. He said, listen, even if I take my son's life, yes. God has the power. Yes. Why? Because he's the rock. There's, there's no other force. There's no other authority. He's not a mighty force in nature. He's the only force in, in the sovereign universe. Thank you. He's it. Without God, we wouldn't be here. God is the one that holds the glue together. That's why this earth hasn't, ha hasn't charged into the sun. That's why the planets stay in order. Why? Because the rock is in charge. Jesus. He's in charge of it all. Thank you, Lord. First, I'd like to look at the reign of God over our life. The reign of God over our life. His reign, his authority, his rule, part of my rock climbing. Because if I don't understand that, I won't understand that God is in charge. He's in charge of everything. He should be first and foremost in my life. His authority should have the preeminence in all I think to do and all I say to do. Why? Because God is supreme. Uh -huh. And God is God and beside him there is no other. God told him in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Why? Because it's his reign over your life. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. God said, listen, if I'm not first, I'm last. Yes, yes, yes. He said, listen, you want me to rule your life? You want me to guide your life? You want to be on a journey, huh? You want to rock climb so that you know who I am and be able to be in a place so that you don't miss what I'm ready to bless you with? He said, listen, allow my authority to have the preeminence. He said, love me with all your heart. That way, if you don't love me, you got to examine yourself because you know when it's a case of divided loyalty. But God said, if you love me with all your heart, he said, I demand it, not request it. Hear, O Israel, love the Lord thy God because he's one Lord. He's not confused about who he is, but we often get confused about who God is and have made him to be our celestial bellboy. But he's not that. He's God all by himself. Yes. And when I acknowledge his reign over my life, yes. then I ought to fall prostrate to the ground with my head down and say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Yes. Why? Because you're God and beside you there is no other. I'm just rock climbing, God. I'm just seeking you as never before. I'm having a heart like David to seek after your will. I want to know what you know for me. I want to know what you have for me. So God, I honor you first. Yes, thank you, Lord. And place you above all else. Mm -hmm. St. Matthew 6.33 says, listen, seek ye the Lord. Seek the Lord. St. Matthew 6.33 says, listen, 
Bless the Lord. But seek ye the first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. Put him first. Put him first. Let him be the delight of your spirit. Let him be the delight of your mouth. Let him be the delight of your heart. Put him first. God, I'm rock climbing right now. I'm trying to get close to you. And I know the only way I can get close to you, God, is to have you over me. The only way I can get close to you, God, is to honor you as God. That's the first part. Honor him as God. You can't get away from it. You can do everything you want to do, but it won't satisfy if he's second best. Right. If he's on the shelf and only pulled out when you need him. Uh -huh. You dust him off when there's something that needs to be done. But if he's got to be first, yes, yes, yes. or he's last. I'm rock climbing, God. I'm just, I'm getting to know you, God. I'm seeking after. I'm like David. I'm, I'm longing. I'm, I'm tasting. Oh, taste that. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh -huh. Lord, I'm rock climbing right now. I'm seeking after you. Yes. But I know, God, as long as I have you yeah. uh -huh. in right perspective, right priority. Yeah. Come on, you know when the Lord ain't first. Yeah. You know when he's second best or not even in the picture. But he said, hear, O Israel. Our God is one Lord, and you ought to love him with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added. Why? Because this is what God oversees over us. The first thing he looks down and sees is where you place me. First thing he looks down and sees, because listen, he owns it all. He's not impressed by your looks. He's not impressed by your wealth. He's not impressed by your standard or your posture. But rather, God is impressed by your worship. God is impressed by your humility. God is impressed by your humility and submission. God is impressed by how you honor him. Amen. That's what gets his attention. Yes. That's what gets his attention. How is it all the time when we find ourselves having to backtrack? When we find ourselves in a position where we got to get right with God, the first thing we got to do is come into his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us. We got to come into his presence in humility and honor him and give him his just due. Because there's no other God like our God. He's high and he's lifted up. So, oh Israel, understand this. Our God is one God. He's one God and we honor him as we never had before. He's worthy to be praised. So, uh, when I'm rock climbing, I got to make sure that the reign of God is, is, is overseeing and that God is overlooking my life and, and looking down and observing how I live, but rather how I honor him. Yes, yes thank you. Phew, glory, 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 how I honor him. And not only is it about honor, I also said that the reign of God I talked about, I said this, that how God oversees and he looks and sees our life. Isn't God wonderful, beloved? Yes. Amen, amen. Yes. Now I have to consider the outlook of God, how God sees me. I know how I'm supposed to see him as God, but the outlook of God is how God sees me, his omniscience, his ability to know it all. That's why when you go before God, God knows everything. There's no need for you trying to hide from God that which can't be hidden. He sees and he knows all. See, if I honor him first and say, Lord, you're the rock, you're, you're the rain over my life. Now, God, overlook my life, oversee my life, observe my life, see me in the light of who I am so that I might know thee. I read a book some years ago, Knowing God. It was by J.I. Packer. And it spoke about them that knew God and them that did not know God. But what it gave special reference to the fact that if you know God, yes. there's things in your life that will definitely change because it's about God and not about you. Right. Yes. David knew God and was called a man after God's own heart. Yes. 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 And God changed his life. I'm worried about, I'm concerned about God overseeing my life because I need to know what God knows. I need to be concerned about how God sees me. Lord, how do you see my life? I'm honoring you. I'm, 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 I'm seeking to do your will. I've sought after you. God, how do you see my life? 
How do you see my life? The scripture says here in Isaiah 55 and 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This lets me know that even though I thought it, even though I, I take an attempt to think about it, God's thought and comprehension is much higher than me. God has already thought about it, communed about it, already deliberated it, already took care of it, because he's God. So there's really nothing in my arsenal that would cause me to think that I can outthink God. Because God knows who I am. And when I go to the rock, he's able to expose to me the inner secrets even of my heart. Because he knows me. He said, I know the thoughts. I know what you think before you think it. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, well, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God said, listen, I determined to bless you. You don't even understand that I'm thinking blessing on your life. So listen, listen, clear your mind of what you're thinking. Because if you don't think like I'm thinking, and let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus, he said, you have a contrary thought. But if you think I'm not going to bless you, then you're not thinking my thought. Why? Because if I'm under him, I've already uh, surrendered to his reign and authority in my life. He says, listen, now I'm overseeing how I think about you, my outlook about you. I said you're blessed, why don't you believe it? I said you're healed, why don't you believe it? I said you're up and not down, why don't you believe it? I said it, that's what I'm thinking about you. I did it. I said I would fix it, why don't I do why not take me at my word? I'm thinking higher than you thinking. If I say it, it sounds it. Why are you debating with all, oh, glory to God. Why are you debating with all that he said? Jesus. If I said no weapon formed against thee shall prosper, why you got a problem with the weapon? If I said it, my thoughts are above your You can have, you can be, you can do whatever I determined to speak out of my mouth for you. Hmm? He said, I know, he says, listen, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of, of authority, thoughts of power, thoughts of blessing, whatever I think towards you, it's to bring you to my purpose. Mm. Jesus. Whatever I thought about, Thank you, Lord. it's good for you. That's why you can de delight in Romans 8, 28, all things mm. work together for yes, the good yes, yes. to them that love God and to them Thank that are called Lord. according to his purpose. Because it's the thoughts of God toward me. Mm. And if he determined to bless me, no devil in hell, no person, no sickness, no circumstance, no decision, no crisis can come against the thought that God has thought. Amen. Glory to God toward me. Amen. He knows what's in your mouth. He knows. The scripture declares in Isaiah 65 and 24, and it shall come to pass that before they call, yes, 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 I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, Ooh. glory to God. I will hear. Has God ever blessed you when you had a thought in your mind? You just wanted something small and wasn't much. But you thought about it and then somebody showed up with it. Don't tell me God don't hear your thought. I don't care if it's ice cream. I don't care if it's a piece of cake. I don't care if it's a small thing. Or, or you're just sitting there, boy, I sure haven't talked to so-and-so in a long time. And all of a sudden, the phone rings. Yeah. God said, listen, I know your thoughts before you think them. And while you're yet deliberating whether I heard it, I'll answer. Hey, glory! Yeah. I'm telling you what God can't do. Jesus. Amen. I'm just rock climbing here today. Amen. Why? Because I know the reign of God and the thoughts of God toward me. Amen. I'm in a winning position. 
I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. Thank you, Amen. I'm not beneath. I'm above. Why? Because God's word says so. And it's the thoughts of God towards me. Glory, 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 glory. That has happened so many times that it's almost frequent. And when you think of something, it happens before you even conclude the thought in your mind. God brings it to pass. Yes. God said, I know what you're thinking. Yes. <laughs> he said, that's why when you try to hide it, you only defeat and, and, and abort my blessing because I know what you thought right. before you thought it. You remember when God told Philip, he said, I saw you back behind the tree. When you said, can any good things come out of Nazareth? I saw you. You thought nobody saw you, but I saw you. Why? Because I know your thoughts before you even think of I know your thoughts. Amen. Amen. That's good to know. See, see that, that lets us know that God ain't playing. Amen. That lets us know that God is serious. Right. That lets us know that if God is okay with our thoughts in the sense that he examines them and don't crush us, I'm fine. Because yeah. a lot of thoughts come in your mind you wouldn't tell nobody. Right. But God sees them all. And he's not right. stepping on you when it's a wrong thought. Right. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. He instructs you by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. What his thought is in respect to the wrong thought or the contrary thought. Amen. I've even had the Holy Ghost check my spirit when I say, I don't know if I'm going to do that. The Lord said, didn't I tell you in my spirit? Didn't I tell you I was going to do it? Why you keep acting like it's not done? You don't pray for it. You don't fast for it. You don't believe for it. Why are you acting like God didn't tell you it was already done? Oh, but agree with me in prayer. Come on, how many agreements you need? You only need one agreement. Come on, God. Huh? Amen. You only need one agreement. Amen. You don't want agreement. You want company. But I need one agreement. One agreement. God agreed with me. Oh man, that what he said is what he said. Yeah. And God said, not only are you going to hold hands in faith believing, he said, I'm going to settle in your spirit so nobody will see that I deposited it in you. And that will be the force and the move that will keep you going. Yeah. I can make it. Yeah. Okay. Everybody else telling you you can't. I can make it. I'm all right. Yeah. God has determined in my spirit already that I'm going to be all right. But you ain't got that, so all right. It don't matter what it looks like on the outside. It matters what God has spoken on the inside. Hey! It matters what God said to me in the midnight hour. It matters. That's the voice I'm concerned about. That's the agreement I'm concerned about. Because he's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my strength. When you said give up, he said hold on. Huh? When he said go forward, hey man, you said go backwards, he said go forward. Stay. And having done all, stay. He's my rock. Rock climb. You need, you need certain tools to rock climb. You need a harness. You need certain shoes. You need an attitude. And I'm going to tell you what, if you ever look at a rock or look at a mountain to climb, you better have the attitude that when you get up high, the altitude you give me get to breathe a little difficult. Breathing becomes difficult. Why? Because the air is thin. Yeah. But God said, listen, when you follow my purpose and my plan, even though breathing may seem difficult, I'm going to give you the breath of the Holy Spirit yes. To, yes. To, to make up what you don't have yes. and to fulfill what you need. You ever show up with lack and God give you abundance? You ever show up with need and God give you favor? God said, whatever you show up with, he said, I'm able to build it and make it and satisfy it because you're my purpose, not your own. Amen. God is able. Amen. We need to know that today. Because if you look at the news and hear the crisis, yes, yes, yes. we are in a state of despair. Yes. But the church is not. But the world is in a state of despair. My mind saying one thing out of their mouth and then something else out of their lips. Not even, not, not even agreeing with what has been spoken. Truth breakers, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, will take a life and it won't mean a thing. Right. It'll be just like an ant died or a roach died. Right. No, 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 no face to the death. Right. No face to the body. But I thank God through Jesus Christ 
that he gives us the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit to know that God has our back. Because it'd be so easy to get caught up in the mob. It'd be so easy to get caught up in the crowd. It'd be so easy, but because of the mind of God, I know that even though it looks bad, God has an expected end for you and I. Amen. Amen. It's not over until God says it's over. It's not done until God said it's done. And it, it ain't happening until God said it'll happen. Yes. He's the rock. He's the authority. Yes. Woo, glory. He's the power. And not only, glory to God. Not only is God looking over my life and giving me his outlet, I outlet by his mind. God is looking over my life and, and depositing his character. His character. That's why you walk like you walk. That's why you talk like you talk. Look what Thomas said in Psalms 15, 1 and 2. He said, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Or who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness speaketh the truth in his heart. Why? Because God says, listen, part of my, my will for you is my character. And my character is righteousness. And I'm a holy God. And because I'm a holy God, I demand and expect you to be holy too. I demand and expect for you to walk in righteousness. I demand and expect for you to make a difference between clean and unclean. I don't care how dirty the stuff gets. I don't care how cloudy the situation gets. God still has a right and a wrong. God still has a, a, a determination where he set a line in the sand and let you know that this is what I approve and this is what I disapprove. God has not changed his disposition concerning disobedience or sin. God is still a God that despises sin but loves the sinner. Isn't that something? He despises sin but loves the sinner. Why do I know that? Because he loved me. And I was a sinner and God saved me in the midst of my works and gave me his best. But God said, listen, I didn't give you my best that you would continue to do like the rest. I gave you my best so you could be different. I gave you my best so you would set a standard. I gave you my best so you would put a difference between what is right and what is wrong. His righteousness. His righteousness over my life. My life is new now. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's a transformation. There's a change. My life is not the same. I don't even think different. I don't talk, I don't talk the same. I walk different. Why? Because the righteousness of God is overseeing and overlooking my life. Amen. I'm being changed daily. Amen. I'm being made different. Yes. I'm being made into a new creature. What you saw last year is different than what you see today. Why? Because he's transforming me. He's changing my life. So anybody that's a believer who hasn't changed and still has the same nasty disposition, still has the same character, still walks around with the same meanness and lack of faith and lack of respect and lack of God and all this and all that, then I question whether you're saved. Because with salvation comes transformation. Yes. And God transformed you. No, know, it ain't overnight. But understand this. Something happens. Amen. Right. Amen. Something happens. There has to be a change. There has to be a change in your character. Yes. Come on, why? God's character can't change. He's holy. Hallelujah. Amen. From, from, from ever was to ever will be. He's holy. Yes. He's holy. Can't be anything less than holy. And why? I mean, we on the natural will marry somebody expecting them to change. And then we find out we ain't God and they ain't going to change. Yeah. Then we have to ask God for some intervention. Amen. God, you got to speak to him. I'm sick of this man. I'm sick of this woman. I'm sick of this person. God, you got to speak to him. Why? Because when we realize it, we don't have the power nor the authority to change nobody. Yeah, that's, right. that's why as much as you weeping at the altar, if God don't move on their behalf, there ain't going to be no change. Amen. But because we take God at his word and know there's no authority, no power greater than God, and that if we walk in faith believing, Amen. God will hear our petitions. Yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't pray. Yes. 
Amen. But when we pray, Lord, I want to change. It may not come overnight. It may not come in a minute. It may not come for years. But understand this. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Bless God. It's coming. Why? Because when you believe God and take God at his word, God said, listen, now you put this person on the altar, expect them, expect me to make them like me. Amen. Come on now. Sometimes we pray and just wanted them to be all right for us. Amen. And God said, no, I'm making them like me. I know what you like, but I'm more so I know what you need. Because if I'm making what you like, you'll never have what you need. Amen. 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 So he says, listen, my character my character. Ooh, I know some of us are characters. But my character is holy. I'm a holy God. I'm a holy God. And, and we know we've been saved long enough and been involved in church and brushing elbows with folk that go to church and we have believers and we have non-believers that attend church. But many times people think it's what they wear on the outside. But how many know that it's the inside? That's the change. Amen. Amen. You can dress up like a hobo and have the spirit of God. Amen. 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 Or dress up like a queen and be mean as the devil. Amen. 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 That's right. So it doesn't matter. Your, your outward appearance is going to change. But if there's no change on the inside, I don't care what you look like on the outside. That's right. The change has to come from the inside. And that's why God deposits himself in us. In us. In us. So that his character will be, will be displayed and manifest before me. The character of God. I, I'm different now. I remember when I first got saved, folks would ask why you don't do what you do. Well, I'm different now. Amen. I know I look like the old Paul, but I'm different now. I can't do. I, I, can do, I could do, but I don't do because of what's in me. And there's a challenge. See, that's what God does. When the Holy Ghost, by faith believing in Jesus Christ, and God deposits himself in you. When you believe in Christ, see, you can't be a believer without the Spirit of God. Amen. So for those that say I'm saved and don't have the Spirit of God, I don't know what salvation you got. <laughs> but you can't be a believer without the Spirit of God. That's what transforms us. Amen. So as a believer, when the Spirit of God enters my spirit, upon faith believing in Jesus Christ, he begins the process of transformation in my life. So that the old things that I used to do struggle with the new spirit of God in me. Yeah. And as I yield to the demands of the spirit of God on the inside, I'm transformed on the outside by saying yes to the will of God. That's why you can be a believer and have to say yes for the sake of salvation, but having said yet yes for the sake of him being Lord over your life. He said, listen, I just, I'm not just trying to snatch you from hell. I want to give you abundant life. So if you just satisfy with being snatched from hell, you're not going to live, glory to God, in abundant life. But if you choose by faith to make me not only Savior and Lord, he said, I can change your life so that your life will be that much more abundantly. Amen. Some folks say even miserable as anything. Miserable. And all they have to do is take God at their word and they have the vehicle within them, the spirit of God, but they're refusing to yield to his spirit. I ain't killed nobody. That don't mean I'm a bad person. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I don't want to just be not guilty of an act. I want to be favored by God in my living. Right. You know, you know, I, I don't sleep, I, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I, I, I don't chew or hang with them that do. <laughs> what a testimony. You can do that and not be saved. Think about it. You can do that and not be saved. You cannot smoke, you cannot drink, you cannot cuss, you cannot run with them, you cannot, and still not be saved. That's right. That's right. Because abundant life is, is a product of our relationship with him. So all that stuff can be out of your life, you can live a moral life and bust hell wide open. Because the only thing you're going to be judged by when you stand before the master is what you do with the Christ. Were you faithful? Did you honor him? Did you serve him? Actually, first of all, was he your savior? Did he save you? Yeah, amen. Because if the blood hasn't been applied, yeah. you ain't got no shield nor no shelter. Amen. If the blood hasn't been applied. Amen. 
So all my church going don't mean nothing. Amen. All my labor in the church. I work in church. Don't tell me now. I work in church. This is mean as the devil. I work in church. And you say, well, you work so hard, you work for a in the church instead of working for in the church. Amen. Why? Because the character of God is what folks see. That's why a lot of people are offended at the care of God because most people think, well, you know, you can't love God that much. Yes, you can. Oh, you're just crazy about Jesus. Yes, I am. I was crazy about sin when I was out there. Crazy about some people when I was out there. Now I'm crazy about the Lord. I'm a fool for Christ's sake. Amen. Call me foolish, but you can't call me anything less than saved. Amen. Amen. Why? Because the character of God has given me the disposition to trust God and take God at his word. There are things I can do that I don't do only because of God's character. Come on now, we big enough, grown enough, do anything you want to do. Bad enough to do anything. I don't do it because of his character. Flesh is screaming to do it. But even though you put flesh to death, flesh will let you know in a minute it ain't dead. Something that arm will come from under the blood. That leg will come up from under the blood. Amen. And lips will slide from under the blood. Amen. And I'm using that analogy because the flesh will let, let you know in a minute when it don't want to cooperate with the spirit. Amen. In our disposition, because we have the authority, the power of God, the knowledge of God in our life, we can say no to the devil and no to the flesh. Amen. Amen. Why don't you do it? Because I choose not to do it. All things are lawful, but everything is not expedient. In other words, I can do it, but it doesn't benefit me. Amen. Amen. I got the freedom to do anything, but it don't benefit me. Why? The me? No, it doesn't benefit my spirit, man. Amen. I'm trying to go up, not go down. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. The character of God says, listen, in Psalms 99 and 9, it says, exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Yes. For the Lord our God is holy. Amen. Ooh, glory. Holy God. That's right. Come on. It's about the character. It's about his disposition. He's my rock. He's the, he's the rain over my life. Glory to God. Oh, he's power. He's authority. Amen. He's all that I need for whatever I need. Isn't that wonderful, beloved? He's all that I need. Yeah. He's the outlet over my life because he gives me what I need to know. And he's the character over my life. It's not just coming to church. It's a relationship. Yes. Amen. Because when I'm not in church and I have to pray, I may not get on my knees. I may be walking around and praying. Not even opening my mouth, not even mouthing my mouth, but in my spirit. Yes. I'm having a conversation yes. with him who is eternal. Yes. And he's changing me. Yes. Maybe I walked in the room the wrong way. And the spirit of God will cause you to turn around and speak to you. And by the time you get back in the room, God will change your attitude yes. about what should be changed. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Can you understand how God could send a prophet, Isaiah, to Hezekiah? Mm. Send him in and tell him, you're going to die and not live because your house is ragged. Jesus. Get your house in order. Yes, and the prophet went, a man of God, not, not, not a parking lot prophet, right. but a real prophet. He said, listen, I'm speaking the mouth of God to you. Hezekiah King. Get your house in order or you're going to die. Right. Mm -mm -mm. Now understand this. He has one option. You either fall and throw yourself on the mercy of the court and ask God to change his mind or fast and pray or continue to do what you've been doing. And Hezekiah said, you know what? He turned his face to the wall. He said, I understand this, that God honors humility. Yes. And even though I'm wrong, I'm going to hold my head down because God honors humility. Yes. He turned his face to the wall and began to cry out. I don't know what he said, but whatever he yes. said. The prophet wasn't even out of the king's court. And before he got to the outer court, the Bible says, he says to Hezekiah, go back. I heard his prayer. Now Hezekiah, basically, I know he had to be confused. Wait a minute, God. You sent me to bring judgment. But because you heard his prayer. Yes. See, that's the power God got. God can 
change the mess. God can change the testimony. He can change the prognosis. He can change the report because he's God. Yes, yes, yes. Before he got out, turned around and said, God heard you. I don't know what you said, but God heard you. And God has added 15 years to your life. Amen. Somebody said that wasn't much, but if they told you you had five minutes to live, oh, 15 years would be an eternity. Bless God. But why? Because of the character. He knew enough to humble himself. I always, David, David did that all the time. Blot out my transgression. God have mercy on me. David would fall on the mercy of the court in a minute. He said, God have mercy, and God would have mercy. Yes. And finally, not only is it the character of God over my life, it's the kindness of God, his affection toward me. Yes. Psalms 117 and 2 says, for his mercy, merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise you, but God is kind toward us. That's why you run to the rock, because God is kind. God is affectionate. He's concerned about loving you up because he loves you. He's not mean. He's not detestable. He's not saying, don't come to me. God said, listen, come on, come to me. That's why he told them when the disciples were trying to stop the children. He said, suffer little children, come unto me. For such is the kingdom of God. He said, listen, come on, because I'm kind. I have a person. I'm merciful. Come on, send them to me. Why? Because that's my nature. I'm kind-hearted. I'll draw them with love and kindness. Why? Because I'm God. And that's what I do. Run to me, run to me, run to me. Why? Because I'll receive you. Yes, I'm kind. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. Psalms 119 and 76 says, listen, let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word, the word unto thy servant. Let the tender mercies come unto me that I may live for thy law is my delight. He said my kindness, he said your kindness is my comfort. God ever been kind to you? Amen. You needed just a refresher. You ever been in a service? You ever been in a, in a, in a quiet place or a secret closet and you were so filled with, with, with struggle and so filled with, with tests and so filled with whatever you were going through and God released the kindness yeah. of the Holy Ghost. And it's like somebody poured water on you. It's a refreshing. Yes, yeah, thank you, Lord. And you know in a minute that God said, I heard you. I got it. Don't, don't you. God sometimes will give you kindness by just patting you on your back and say, listen, yeah. you came to the right place. Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. Thank you. Whew, glory. Yeah. Rock climb. He's our rock, beloved. He's the rain. Glory to God. He overlooks us. He oversees us. He knows our thoughts. He, his character is over our life. His kindness is towards us. Why? Because God loves us. He loves us. He loves us so much that he gave himself for us. Glory, 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 glory. We ought to run to the rock of our salvation. Don't lose sight of our guide. Don't lose sight of who's in charge. Don't lose sight of the fact that God has a purpose and a plan for our life. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, yeah. looking unto Jesus. Oh, he's the guide, beloved. He's the guide. All through our rock climbing, he's our guide. Hey, amen. It says, listen, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, listen, as he guides us through the purpose as he guides us through our destiny, as he gives us what we need for whatever we need. Don't lose sight of him. Let him be your focus. Let him be your focus. And you can weather any storm. You can weather any situation. You know, when people give that testimony, even I've heard it in a song, that if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I wouldn't have made it. Come on, you wouldn't have made it, I wouldn't have made it. Had it not been for the Lord that was on our side, it doesn't mean that I was praying a lot. It doesn't mean that I was reading my Bible 24-7. What it meant was I had a relationship with God, that God had me in the cleft of a rock, and his glory and his presence would continually overflow my soul and keep me in the place of comfort. That's what God is. God will comfort.
comfort you. He said, I'm sending you another comforter. He's just like me. He'll pat you on your back when you need it. He'll lift you up when you need it. He'll guide you when you're longing to be led. He'll, oh, he'll speak to you when you need to hear a word from God. God said, I'll be a comfort for you. Yes. All through your rock climbing, I'll be a comfort for you. All through your journey, I'll be a comfort for you. I'll give you what you need. He said, lay aside every weight. Don't hinder yourself in the journey. Don't hinder yourself in the walk, but trust me and take me by my word. When you are overwhelmed, run to the rock and be blessed and continue to climb. Continue to climb, continue to press forward. Continue to take God at his word. Keep him as the authority. Continue to keep the reign of God over your life. Amen. God is determined to bless you. And as you continue to honor him, God will bless you. Amen. Continue to allow him to oversee, amen, and, and, and just observe and, and, and come into a relationship where the knowledge of God is made clear and made known to you every day. And allow his character, allow his character to come forth in new creation. Allow his character to change your life. Say yes to it and not no. Amen. Say yes to it and not no. Lord, what would you have me to do? That's what Samuel said, Lord, Lord, listen, speak, Lord, your servant here. That ought to be your cry. That ought to be what you say when God speaks. Speak, Lord, Thank your you. servant here. Mm -hmm. Because really the kindness of God will keep you in the midst of anything you're going Thank through. Thank you, Lord. Why, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Yeah. Maybe there's someone this morning. Glory to God.